This is Pinball M for Windows PC, uh, Steam, released in November of 2023 and developed by Zen Studios. They've made a couple other pinball games along the way, and this really wasn't new territory for them. But this does seem to be like an adjustment to target an older audience. We've got a bunch of horror-themed tables, basically. Obviously, this is a video pinball game, and I love a good video pinball game, all the way back to the Atari 2600. Even when they're bad, they're still kind of good to me. I reviewed a bunch of video pinball games on the channel so far, and I'm going to link some of the other reviews in the notes of this video if you're interested. I think if you're a fan of pinball games, video pinball, this is a solid release, and I really like it. It's pretty good. But I do have two basic gripes. First, the game does not feel optimized. It looks good. It looks beautiful. But I immediately had flipper lag, and the whole point of a video pinball game is to hit a ball with the flippers. Those flippers need to react immediately, by default, coming out of the gates. Nothing is more important. I immediately had lag, and as a result, I was getting destroyed. I couldn't use a controller, I couldn't use a keyboard, I couldn't use a wireless keyboard. They all had terrible response time. I eventually turned off V-Sync, it's a video setting, that did alleviate the lag, but now I get slight screen tearing from time to time. It's not crazy, but sometimes. And I also kind of feel the frame rate should just be higher. This immediately got me looking at my graphics card which, as it turns out, was nine generations old. I upgraded to a new modern card just this past week, and I don't think I actually saw much change. That's frustrating. My old graphics card played Destiny 2 great. This pinball game should not be a tougher graphical load. I just don't believe it should be. I upgraded my entire machine this year, actually. I'm running 64 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gig of video RAM. The game looks great but it should be fluid and it should run pristine. I really shouldn't have to go in and figure out how to tweak the settings of a pinball game to maximize the responses. But still, even with that annoyance, it looks good and it does play well enough. I just have to adjust the settings. But it is also unplayable on the Steam Deck. Completely unplayable. I guess my other minor complaint is just the way that they marketed this one. I do understand what they're doing, I just don't like it. They list the game as free on Steam with one table, and of course they want you to buy subsequent tables. Free games that I see, they're usually just in beta, or maybe it's a game that somebody made as a hobby. I do appreciate a good free game, of course, but I give you different expectations when that happens. Here, we get a high-quality game that's trying to lure you in with the word free. That feels like a mobile game tactic, and I don't like it. Then, of course, I went looking to my phone, and it turns out, yeah, they released a bunch of mobile games as well. Here we are. For a PC game, I just wanted this to be more of a full release. I would have preferred paying $20 for four or five generic tables, and then you give me the opportunity to buy those fancy branded ones you're making. That would have been great for your revenue, and would have been great for the player. I mean, this is also on the heels of the free table they give you is actually really nice. They could have given me a few more of those, it would have been amazing. I don't have all the tables here, but I did buy most of them. They're all well detailed, they're all fun to play, they're not just reskins, which is great. They're all unique with their own effects, different layouts. It's nice. Some of the tables play pretty well on my laptop, but my goal was to play these on a big TV with my gaming PC. So the free table they give you, it's called Wrath of the Elder Gods, and it's this gothic cosmic horror theme. We're going to get tentacles, a big organic monster at the top of the field. You get some runes in the middle of the gameplay area, and the center ramps look like they're made of bone. I think for a generic table... Wrath of the Elder Gods is great. The table really flows well, and I think they did a really good job on it. I just wish they gave us more generic tables like this. That would have been awesome. The Dead by Daylight table is based on the horror video game of the same name. I barely played that game, but I know it's very popular. There's a whole list of killers in that game, but this table uses the Trapper, who I'm pretty sure was one of the original three villains of that game. He's this big guy with spikes sticking out of him, and he's got this avatar standing near the upper center of the table and it animates throughout the various gameplay. The style of the table here, you're kind of in the backwoods, it's like a rusty gas station, junkyard type of styling. It looks great. You get some stainless steel ramps with blood smeared on them, and this just matches the type of table. You also get this cool mechanism at the top of the ramp that redirects balls that you manage to shoot up there. Like all the different tables, they have these unique bits about them, and this one the trapper will actually animate from time to time and chase the victims. It's very cool. 
The Duke Nukem table is probably the least favorite of mine so far. It's fine. I mean, it's got a red floor on the table that just makes it, I don't know, visually, maybe it's harder for me to follow the ball. I guess I haven't done too much with the game it was based on, so I don't have the fanboy attachment to it. Ultimately, red is just not my color. And I don't know, maybe I could be a little better with this if I adjusted some of the video settings. With this, you get crude 90s tough guy quips from Duke Nukem. That's what he does. You get some swears and a bunch of aliens with some varied graphics on the table. It looks fine. It plays fine. It's just, to me, not as exciting as some of the other tables. There's a Chucky table, and that has a ton of audio clips from the movies or possibly the show. It has video excerpts that will run in your score display at the top left from time to time. I know when I'm playing this, I'm probably missing out on most of the visuals because I'm busy focusing on the game. I don't want to lose a ball that's bouncing around. But it does feel like they did really good fan service with this table. You get clips from Chucky, you get clips from his bride, and the audio here, it does sound like it's clipped right from the movies or the series. If they're using a voice impersonator on this table, they've got a damn good one. The Thing table is next, and that's probably my favorite John Carpenter movie, and it's got some great table animations when you do your certain tasks. At one point, there's a flamethrower on the left of the screen that blasts across the playfield, and there's a dog mutant thing that appears and writhes around at certain moments. It's creepy, and I appreciate these animations. They're great. There are plenty of audio clips with this table, but they're not directly from the movie. At first, I thought I was hearing Kurt Russell's voice, but after playing this a few times, I realized that there was a definite voice difference, and some of the lines that they say are actually different from the movie. I think the voice actors are pretty good. I mean, they're close. I just, I always find myself in these situations wondering why they didn't use actual clips. This table is based on a 40-year-old movie, and I guess I would have figured you could get the license for the entire property, and it would have come with audio from the movie as well. But then again, I am just a fan, and I have no idea about the logistics of making something like that happen. Maybe it actually was a much more expensive license. Who knows? They also have a System Shock table and a Texas Chainsaw Massacre table. I don't have those yet, but if they become part of a bundle, I'll probably pick them up together. I think all the tables have a pretty good variety, which is something I like. And each table has unique elements. I was very happy to see all these differences, and they just weren't basic reskins. I think with any table in this game, there are a bunch of things they've also added to make the experience more interesting and customizable to a certain extent. Besides leaderboards, you get a bunch of different gameplay modes, and you can accrue levels and gain points when you keep playing. You use these to purchase little unlocks that change little parts of the game. How the ball looks, how the bumpers look, sounds. Little things that maybe aren't really needed, but if this is a game you really get into, you can tweak the little things to your liking, which is kind of awesome. They went much further into these little things that you can unlock than I really expected, and I'm a little impressed as a result. Well, that's all I have today for Pinball M for Steam. If you're into video pinball, you should probably give this one a try, especially considering you get a really good free table when you install it from Steam. Thanks for stopping by to take a look and hope to catch you on another video.